Warning, Marriage on the Rocks provides unfiltered, unconventional, and sometimes unwelcomed relationship advice. Seth and Crystal are certified relationship coaches who have adopted specific methods that work very well for them. Your results may vary. Hey everyone, welcome to our 82nd episode of Marriage on the Rocks. I'm Crystal. And I'm Seth. Every week we have a drink with our discussion. And this week we decided to do a shot and an actual drink. My mouth is like watering. Yeah, I know. It kicks you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. The shot was um, peanut butter uh, whiskey with glazed donut. Yeah, glazed donut. Vodka. Mm-hmm. Yeah, glazed yeah. donut vodka. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, all I taste is the, the peanut butter, peanut butter yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Mm-hmm. And the, well, there's actually less peanut butter than, really? than, the, than the glazed donut. Yeah. Oh, wow. I just yeah. thought we'd try it. Yeah. So, yeah, we had that for a shot to, because uh, we're entering into the new year. Well, we're, we will be uh, this week. And thought, what better way to, to do that than take a, yeah. take a shot? A celebratory shot. Yes. And then for our actual drink, we are having a peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, it's called a PB and J. Yeah. Um, try it. It's good. Okay. This one is. Uh, it's the peanut butter whiskey that we had. Uh, we use Screwball, but I don't know however many is there any peanut other? butter brands there are. But it's really good. Yeah. Um, used like a one and a half ounces of that. Excuse me. With. Um, an ounce of the raspberry chambord mm-hmm. liqueur and then two ounces of half and half cream yeah. and I actually one of the drinks of several episodes ago was a, a raspberry something and I used egg white to make it frothy mm-hmm. and so I was like I'm gonna do that again yeah that's good with this what do you think it's good it's, it's awesome really good. isn't it uh-huh. yeah 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 PB and J it's 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 a really I still don't taste drink. the raspberry that much yeah though. the peanut butter just kind of takes it which I'm fine with because I'm a huge peanut butter nut it's good though, yeah. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I think if I do it next time, I'll do equal parts. Yeah, maybe. Because huh? yeah. I love the raspberry liqueur. Yeah. Oh man, I know. Um. So, but it's it's really smooth. There's no bite to it at all. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of worried about the half and half. I was like, yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't know how that'll be, but I mean, white Russians and all that stuff. Yeah. So uh huh. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. And we use the fat free half and half. Yeah, we do. Uh huh. So this week, uh, well, it's again, like I said, it's the end of the year, you know, start of a new year. And we thought what better way to end the new year with, uh, with talking about how the year was. Yeah. And not like for us, but no. Yeah. About the episodes, like, yeah. you know, our top 10 episodes of the year. We, we went through, we looked at some of the statistics for, for our podcast. For all the episodes. For all did. of the episodes. And mm-hmm. gathered all that and came up with the top ten list that we, we want to share with you all. Because we, as everybody knows, we took last week off. Yeah. It yeah. was just, we looked at it and it was like, you know, Christmas Eve is on a Tuesday. Our episodes always drop on Tuesday. Everybody was off or mentally off yeah. and checked out. and So we knew that the listens wouldn't be... That yeah, great, much. and it was just absolutely pointless to do an episode the week of Christmas to drop on Christmas Eve. Yeah, uh, most of the people that listen, I believe, were probably off taking off, and this one that maybe same still kind of a little thing. bit of I that, know. but not as bad as I think Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did get some people like, What happened? Reach I was out. looking yeah. for an episode, yeah. So, yeah, I know it's Christmas, Scrooge, back off. <laughs> well, I know, and and we should have, but we didn't, we really didn't, <coughs> we should have said something. The week before, like, that we... have the dead cat on the thing. Oh, shoot. That's okay. Okay. Um, but we should have said something the week before. Yeah, we forgot that... to say, hey, we're not... Because we knew we weren't. Well, well we actually, didn't we did. We, we, we were going to try to do some quick little, at least Merry Christmas message, mm-hmm. but you know how it is. Everything yeah. kind of got here quick, and I thought, like, at the last minute, I was actually going to have to go somewhere, and yeah. And so we, we just had a lot of stuff going on. And... Yeah, we did. We did have a lot going on. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, so we're back. Yeah. <laughs> and but I guess I say all that because out of taking last week off, I d- we took one other week off. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember why or when. I think it was it was for uh, Thanksgiving week we took off. 
was okay. Maybe it yeah. was then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So other than that, we recorded fifty episodes this year. Yeah. So only uh-huh. two weeks off. Right. So yeah. pretty good. Uh huh. Not too bad. Pretty good. That's a lot of talking. I know. Uh huh. Here in a few weeks, we'll probably take another week off because yeah, we'll be on the cruise. Yeah. Uh huh. So. But we, I mean, we try, we try our best to stay consistent mm-hmm. with all of you and. Um, I mean, I think that with everything, I think that consistency is key. Yep. <laughs> and so, yeah, we want to, we want to keep putting these out there and being consistent about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, the top 10 episodes of the year. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that some of them made the top 10 cause they were, a couple of them were more recently recorded. Yeah, I know. And I thought, cause you kind of think like the numbers game, well, people get a chance to listen to things that have been out since the beginning of the year throughout the year, but to have a couple that show up. Right, I know. And there yeah. were some from the beginning of the year that I was a little surprised that didn't make the yeah. the top ten list. I was like, huh. Well, well and we, we have people that start following us, and they just kind of jump in. Right. And yeah. sometimes looking back, I'm like, yeah, don't listen to our first few episodes. I know. Because the, the quality well, I know, cause that worse, is so. our that's our number one listen to episode. Is the very first Is one. the very first episode. And yeah. I'm like, oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> like... Because I, I can, me listening to it, I'm, I could tell now. that, yeah. oh my gosh, I sound so nervous, mm-hmm. and I know that I was, because, and you were always like, don't be, don't be nervous, like, mm-hmm. you're fine, you know, <laughs> and you're not, it's just us, it's just us in front of a camera, yeah. but for some reason it was scary to me, so. You're not nervous when we set a camera up for other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So you know, we were su- surprised though with some of the stuff mm-hmm. that did make the list. Uh, the so oh so but starting with the new year, Seth is actually changing it up with his dumbass post a week of the week, and he's changing it to a positive ass post of the week. Yeah, we're gonna try. To do a positive quote for the rest of this year. Um, a little history behind the dumbass post of the week. Because we were, I don't know, a few weeks ago we were listening to some old episodes. And we ran across the very first one that we did mm-hmm. the da pal, the mm-hmm. dumbass post of the week on. And I was like, oh, I forgot that was it. But I said in that one that at the time I just kept seeing it all through my social media news feed. Mm-hmm. Like every day, I was like, "Oh my gosh, look at this! Look, look what she posted! Look what he shared! Look at this! Do they really think this is true?" And so I was like, "You know what? I'm going to start using these mm-hmm. because they're stupid." Yeah. And if you think that way, according to my train of thought and our philosophy, it's a dumbass post. Yeah. Well, apparently, <laughs> everyone listened. Yeah. No. <laughs> everyone was listening and acting like they weren't listening because it stopped. Yeah. I don't I don't see it anymore. And I know that those people that were sharing him regularly didn't all of a sudden get smarter. <laughs> <laughs> they just I guess I, I don't know if I embarrassed. Nobody ever said like fuck you or why are you sharing what I said? Uh, probably cuz they were embarrassed that you know that you I I guess it. passively called them out. I mean, I never said anybody's name. Right. Yeah. At all. Cuz uh-huh. I didn't I don't I'm not going to do that. Uh-huh. You need to put a bleep right there. <laughs> I'll act like I said somebody's name. <laughs> or, Thanks, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any Karen friends. So. <laughs> but, you know, it was really because I just kept seeing them all the time. And it stopped. Um, so the last couple of months, it, it, for those of you that follow us and, and are joined our speakeasy group, mm-hmm. which do that if you haven't. Yeah. But we ask for people to share that. and Some people have a little difficulty figuring out exactly what that means. Right. Um, so we've had, we've had some. We have some still in the bank that we could use, but... It was like, you know what, we're starting a new year, let's let's try to go a while and, and do some positive ones and things that we can share. And Because um, I think most of the time throughout the week, our posts in the on the Facebook page mm-hmm. and on Instagram are, are pretty positive. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Well, we try to make them as positive as, and what we believe. Yeah. You, you know, because like there's stuff out there that it's like, okay, like, yeah, that's that's pretty good, but... It's not necessarily everything that we believe, and right, and some of them are kind of cheesy, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I mm-hmm. want to share something that cheesy. And, and the ones we talk about on the podcast, we don't share throughout no. the week, um, and we won't because I, I want that to be different. It's yeah. it, you know, the podcast isn't a time for 
a recap of what we've done on social media. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we want to kind of start off with that. Yeah. Okay. So the one to end 2019 and kick off 2020 will be, you can't build a kingdom with someone who still wants attention from the village. Now, not necessarily a positive post, but I believe this. And so mm -hmm. it's not really like the dumbass posts were always like, you dumbass. Is that what you really think? Right. This is like, this is amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> I like that. You can't build a kingdom with someone who still wants attention from the village. And I immediately start thinking about the episode we did about if you're married, act married. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Because I think we really could. And I wish I would have seen that for that. Because uh -huh. that would have been perfect. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's really that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. If you're still seeking that attention. And that village, that village is metaphorical for friends, family, social media, coworkers, exes. Yeah. Random dudes, random chicks. Yeah, if you're wanting... Yeah. Other att attention elsewhere. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. No, don't do and, that. And everybody are really quick to start calling themselves kings and queens and all that bullshit. And they still act like this. Yeah, I know. Well, it's funny that you say that it reminds you of that episode because mm -hmm. that is actually episode... Or that is the number 10 oh, okay. on our number list. Number 10 most listened to. Yeah, so to... To kick it off, that's funny. Look at that. Oh, sorry. You need me right now. Oh, knee. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, number 10 on our list is if you're act married, or if you're married, act married. Yeah. If you didn't listen to if you're married, act married, the title's pretty self explanatory. It is. Um, it wasn't really a rant. It was really, that was, we got a, we got a, one of our followers reached out uh -huh. with how his wife was behaving on social media. Yeah. She was acting, I don't, I don't like to say she was acting slutty because it, there wasn't like a physical sluttiness, but mm -hmm. is there such thing as virtually slutty? <laughs> yeah, probably. Don't you think? She was virtually slutty. <laughs> Virtually. But it was, you know, she was constantly taking pro pro provocative selfies and photos and sending them out there. Wasn't curbing any behavior, was inviting and inviting those type of comments and those type of guys that were, you know, wanting to, you know, you're so gorgeous, you're beautiful, and, and all that cheesy bullshit that I hope you ladies aren't falling for. But, you know, it was all of that type of yeah. stuff really rolled into one. Uh -huh. um, and he was very frustrated, and so we, we spent an hour or so talking about that yeah um and we got a lot of feedback that's we, what we i had was a lot say. of people, a lot like, of people oh, reaching out i know someone one. just like nobody yeah. name dropped which was good uh -huh. but you know a lot of people were like oh, you, everybody knows somebody like that uh -huh. um and, yeah and people so, were sharing the episode and saying you gotta listen to this everybody knows someone like this mm -hmm. and yeah it was it was really <laughs> i mean fun to see but it's like come on people that are acting like that, get it together. Yeah. And if you think that we were talking about you, uh, that says you're right. well, and <laughs> that says more about how you feel about your own guilt than anything we said. Yeah. If you were like, uh oh, fuck you, you were that was directed towards me, you are raising your hand high in the air saying, I'm the virtual slut. Yeah. <laughs> on social media. I know. Yeah. Uh huh. That was a good episode. Yeah. I thought so. Well that was the that was funny because that was the episode where we were sober. Yes, yeah, because yeah. we were in Heber Springs in uh -huh. the Dry County. Yeah. yeah. And that was one that, you know, it's made the top ten, and this was just a few, or a couple months ago. Yeah, uh, it was in October. It was like October, yeah, uh -huh. just a couple months ago. Yeah, um, like so to later crack, October. To crack the top ten that quickly was, was pretty good. I know, um, yeah. We even recently got another message, about very it. recently about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, people play catch-up, people listen yeah. to them in random order, and, uh -huh. and sometimes, like on other podcasts, I may just look at the topic and be like, oh, I wonder what that's about, and listen to it, so... Uh -huh. It's not like a, a series or a sitcom or a TV where you, have, you to, have to listen in order. Yeah, so you uh -huh. can hop in and hop out. I think there's some... The only time you get lost is if we reference something in another episode. Right. And so I think when we do that, it, you tend to see people go back. We may, we may get a spike uh -huh. in, um, a in that episodes. previous episode uh -huh. because we, we mention it or we kind of piggyback on something on there. And people are like, oh, I want to hear more about that. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. Yeah. But that one, that one, it was a fun one. I had a good time with that one. Yeah, it was fun. Number nine is was the five love languages. That was a fun episode to record. And 
I didn't think that it would be as fun as I had with it. Uh-huh. Um, just because we're not, like, completely... Sold on it. Yeah, set yeah. on the five love languages. But it was really fun, and just like, like I think we said in the episode, more, it's like the, like, reading a horoscope. And mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, yeah, I like, guess yeah. it's kind of like me. Yeah, but I, I think some people can see the truths in it, some people can see... Some things that are like, I oh, don't know. But there, there are people that live and die by that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was kind of what we, we wanted to expose. Is you, you may be missing out on a very good partner because you are letting your love language dictate exactly the type of partner you should be pursuing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't have any structure, use that as structure. I think that's fine. But that yeah. was... Some of these, I'm, I'm like trying to remember like, like very... Sp- specific things about it and I can't remember yeah I can't remember on that one like something super specific that would be good to reference I just kind of remember the overall intent well, behind it I remember that you were like I like um because your top two were physical touch and uh and not gifts because gifts was like third mm-hmm. it was physical touch and it wasn't words of affirmation no gosh what was it and you said um, well, that just means I like... Oh, and... I don't know, what was that? What did I say? That, I just like, what? That means I like what? I like to um, be touched, and I think I have it, probably. Well, there and it is, right there. Didn't that say... No, that's the other oh, one. Oh, yeah, I can't remember what... I don't um, even remember the order mine were. I remember the ones that I was like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And anyway, it was yeah. fun. I remember I, the, what I do remember about that one was leading up to it, where we kind of put it out there, and people shared what their love languages were, mm-hmm. and that was fun. Yeah, that was cool. I liked that. I liked that. Um, and and it's and it's really nice that everybody is is participating a lot more and stuff too, and mm-hmm. and uh, especially with the speakeasy page that's cool like we're able to do that but yeah with the five love languages thing everybody was sharing their results and Mm -hmm. telling us what they were and yeah yeah it was it was cool Mm -hmm. uh so number eight was want change be the change this was i think this was probably my favorite episode of the year of the year Yeah. yeah i i've listened to this one a couple of times there, there's some I'll go back and listen to. There's some I don't ever listen to again after mm-hmm. we record it. Um, there's some that I go back and I listen to and I'm like, I'm like, man, I can't believe I said that. Or <laughs> what the hell was I talking about? Or I wonder if somebody misinterpreted that. Or, uh-huh. or that, that sounded too mean, you know, believe it or not. Uh-huh. This one, though, I've listened to it a couple of times. Um, because we had, we had some reaction from it yeah. that was kind of passive. Mm-hmm. from people we know that obviously didn't agree with mm-hmm. our train of thought. And so that made me go back and listen to it again. And I got to tell you, after listening to it two or three times, I'm fucking right. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> I really enjoyed well, that, that episode. Was, that one was more like a grind, what grinds our it, gears it was, type, of, you know, type of episode. And we were, but we said we didn't want it to turn into that. Even I at the know. beginning, we were like, I hope this doesn't turn into this. And, uh-huh. and We were in Denver at the we time. We were in, because that's when we went to Sacramento and then flew to Denver. Yeah. Um, I remember that beer they gave us at the hotel was really good, yeah, too. Yeah, it was. But I, I think that I, I, had, I had just been seeing and hearing and having conversations so much and, and I just get so sick and fucking tired of people's excuses as to why they can't do... X, Y, and Z. Yeah, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Why they didn't stick with this, why they didn't stick with that. And then they talk all this bullshit about what they're going to do and how they're going to accomplish it. And they're, they're hustling and they're grinding. And I, I just get so sick of seeing it because they just keep falling flat on their face. And it was really just kind of like... Shut the fuck up, let the results speak for themselves, mm-hmm. and quit coming up with excuses as to why you aren't meeting whatever goal it is. Mm-hmm. And I know that it wasn't intentionally meant to be about fitness, but that was just kind of one of the things that was easy to relate to. Right. Um, I know it rubs some people the wrong way, which, mm-hmm. once again, is just their self-admittance that they're coming up with a bunch of excuses, mm-hmm. and they're not doing what 
yeah. we believe you have to do. Yeah. And that's another one. I, th- I think the title is very self-explanatory. I know. Don't. And, and I think that that's a very that's a very good one to have as we roll into the new year. Yeah. We didn't do a resolutions no. type of episode. I mean, our last one we did was kind of about the gym because that tends to be a big thing around this time mm-hmm. of year. But we didn't really focus on people's resolutions. Mm-hmm. And whatever your resolution is, I think that you should go back and listen to that episode. Yeah. If, you're, if whatever you're planning on changing in your life or your work or your attitude or whatever change that you want to instill in 2020, instead of spewing bullshit on Facebook about this is my year and goodbye 2019, fuck you and all that crap that we see, listen to that episode. If you want the change, be the change. I mean, it's... Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Um, I think for people that really want it, I think it could be partially motivational. I know, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's you know it's a kind of another one of those where, you know, my what I do is is challenge. Yeah, I know, and people. I think that it's the it it is the challenge, and it's if if someone is like the type of person to. To be like, fuck you, Seth. Mm-hmm. I am going to do this. Yeah. Then, yeah. That's what listen, I want to see. Yes, listen to this episode. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good one. I yeah. like it, too. It's a good one. I don't know if that one was my favorite, though. I think mm. that... I think the next one on the list might be my... Might be your favorite? I Which one's that so. one? <laughs> and that one's... Oh, you're offended. Well, that's a good one right after this one. I know. This one was... Because we listened to that one not too recently, uh-huh. too. I was cracking Yeah, up. I know. It was a good one. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't that the one where you said the you said something about Yeah don't, I said, don't be a little bitch? <laughs> yeah, like the first like first sentence out of my mouth it seemed like I was like Stop being a little bitch. Stop being a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was cracking up right at the beginning of that one. Yeah. Yeah, this one is really just I, I guess I guess there's points and to- points and, and, and hills and valleys in the podcast where we'll do like topics or or you know, we'll we'll see an article, we'll do a top five reasons for whatever. And then it's just, it's, it's kind of like we, we inevitably, every two or three months, do kind of a partial venting mm-hmm. episode yeah. based on what we've been exposed to. And this was another one that was mm-hmm. kind of, that was kind of like that. And it was, it, it really is kind of what I said earlier that if, on that first one, that if, if you think we're talking about you, mm-hmm. you are admitting that you're doing whatever it is we're calling out. Yeah. Even if we're not saying your name. And that's they're not offended. Intent. Yeah, and they're offended. <laughs> um, and, and, and so it, it's just kind of that, it was kind of rolled into that ball of everybody seems to find a reason to get offended about something. And that everybody, or most people seem nowadays to try to find something to get offended about. Um, and we knew that I was saying things, you were saying probably far less things than I was, but we were saying <laughs> things on the show that people were getting offended about. Yeah. I know. And it was, you know, like, that's fine. Uh-huh. You, I'm not in charge of your feelings. You are. I know. Um, and I think that that's where it was really just kind of, wh- why are you offended? Are you offended because you know you're wrong? Mm-hmm. Are you offended because there's some truth behind what was said? Because if it has nothing to do with you and it's not related to all, you're not offended. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, you shouldn't be offended yeah. if it. If it doesn't have anything to do with you. Cause, and, and that's the thing is that people get so caught up in their self. Uh-huh. They're so well, self-consumed. That's when we talk about the narcissistic yeah. person uh-huh. that thinks everything is about them. Yeah. Who's listening right now saying, I bet they're talking about me. <laughs> I know. When we're not, but that's how your narcissistic <laughs> mind works. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, number, number six is... You've settled in your relationship. Yeah. That um, was a really good one. That was a good one, too. I think all these were good. I know. Every one of our episodes is fucking the bee's knees. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting ready. (laughs) So, I know. Yeah, so we're having a a Roaring Twenties. By the time you listen to this, it will be, listen to this, it will be tonight, New Year's Eve. Yeah. Because we're dropping it on Tuesday. Uh Uh-huh. So, yeah, we're having a Roaring Twenties New Year's Eve party, Mm -hmm. and Seth is trying to... To get all... I'm trying to get the slang down. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you trifling ass hoes out there need to quit acting like canceled stamps. <laughs> People are like, what the fuck's a canceled stamp? <laughs> Look it up. Yeah. Roaring 20 slang. That, that's some funny little... It is. Little slang. I was cracking up boobs. It was called bubs. Yeah. 
Let's call them bubs. Uh huh. Bimbo is a dude. yeah. Bimbo actually meant a dude. Uh huh. Yeah. There's all kinds of crazy. Yeah. Crazy language in there. Yeah, but um. So, but you've settled, yeah, but you've settled, you've settled in a relationship. relationship. I mean, th- this was something that we we have been indirectly contacted and directly contacted based on this alone. Yeah. And if you feel that you have, give it a listen. Uh huh. Because I think there's a lot of people that feel that. That's how I felt in my last relationship. That's how you felt in your last mm-hmm. relationship. A lot of people in these normal, bad, hardworking relationships that we, uh, you know, continually go after. This is how a lot of people feel. Yeah. They feel that they've settled. Um, yeah, for, I'm not for, surprised that it's on the top ten. Yeah, for all kinds of reasons. And sometimes you don't realize people don't realize they've settled until they start a family, and they're like, "This isn't what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to go." see the world and I wanted to go do this and I wish I could and there's there's such a level of regret on how their life has progressed that they just begin to feel like they settled mm-hmm. so it's a good one it is um, yeah I don't know when did we record that I can't even remember like what time of year that was I don't remember either I know it I know it came out of just some I want stuff to say it seen. was like more towards like July or something was it over the summer yeah maybe yeah mm-hmm. uh huh yeah, that was that was a really good one though. Yeah. So, but getting into the top five, which number five, I was, I think I was kind of surprised that it made the top five, mm-hmm. which was best qualities to men and women. Yeah. Um, this was another shocker that it was so, I guess, high on the list mm-hmm. um, for top five. Yeah, I think like especially because, I think that, I mean, I know that. Our, our name, the name mm. of our podcast is Marriage on the Rocks. And I think that this was, it really was kind of geared towards like single people. Yeah, but I think that there's a curiosity factor in That's true. both men and women that are like, well, I wonder if I have the qualities that they talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, because true. I know that I know that I'll, I'll even do that if I see some. If, if somebody article. I know shares an article or something, I'll, I'm like, well, I wonder if I have all those qualities. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they're talking about, and spoiler alert, I always do. <laughs> you're, you're bad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, what was the, what was the thing that I saw recently? And I was like, I was like, I'm on that list. It was, was it about like friends to avoid? Yes. Yes. Was. I was cra- Yeah. Somebody I knew I've actually known for a long time. Shared this article, and it, I can't remember if it was toxic friends to avoid or just like friends to cut out of your life. Or something. I mean, it was it was a harsh article, and like I mean, like it, it was like I don't know if it was like I can't remember how many were on the list, but I read like the first few, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's no brainer, no brainer. And then there was one that was talking about the competitor, mm-hmm. and it was like this is that friend that turns everything into competition. That you know they see you as a competitor, and they always have to win. And I'm like, son of a bitch. That's me. That's that's how I am. With yeah, so but many like, aspects. but you were saying though, you were also saying that you're not like that with, with certain people though. Yeah. Uh huh. Like you are with some, but not I that guess, with others. And I can't remember like what. I I, I think with with more casual or acquaintances, mm-hmm. I probably am. But people that like we love and are around all the time. Yeah. Because we, we, because we started talking about, you know, our immediate circle of friends that we spend time with. And I was like, because I would be like, well, you know, these well, people right here, I'm, I'm pretty competitive with them. But these other ones, and I think it was because, I can't remember what I said, but the people that we're really close to, there there's no threatening type of, of behaviors or, or level or sense of competition in any way, shape, or form. Uh-huh. Um, and so I'm not that way with them. Uh-huh. And, but I guess it really is with... Kind of more casual yeah. acquaintances, or uh-huh. yeah. if I know if I know enough about you to irritate me, but we don't really hang out. <laughs> yeah, your competition and you must be destroyed. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it was it was everything it was saying about this this person's mentality and competitive nature. I'm like, geez, yeah, that's that's me. Yeah, I do that. Uh-huh. So sometimes I pop up on the bad lists. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. At least you're not on my bad list. At least I can be honest with myself. That's true. I know. And I didn't get all offended about it and act like a little bitch. <laughs> I know. It was funny. Uh, 
funny though because you were literally like, "Oh my gosh, you got to hear this." Yeah, and I just start reading it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's described me. Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, I mean, the best qualities to to men and women. It, you're right. I think that people do Get, are curious, curious about, about it. it. And that's probably why it was. Uh, well, because I think that one had a big mix. I think I think it was single people that mm-hmm. were like, "Well, what am I looking for?" And and, and that was you know that's one of those to people. Or what are what are what is the opposite sex looking, looking for, for? Yeah, and do I have that? Yeah. And so I think that it was just that overall curiosity, whether you're single, married, engaged, dating, whatever. I think mm-hmm. that you just kind of want to see where you fall. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So if you haven't listened to it, see yeah, if you have any qualities. Yeah. Uh huh. Number four is should I stay or should I go? This was another one that we would get multiple uh, listeners reaching mm-hmm. out yeah. to us about this very topic. Yeah. Well, and that was one of the reasons we decided to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it was that 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 was the number one question we would get from mm-hmm. people, and and it was really kind of a are you looking for. For us to say, yes, get out of there. Mm-hmm. Because if that's the answer you're looking for, you already know what your answer is mm-hmm. in your own heart. Um, but that that still continues to be probably the biggest, biggest question, question we get from mm-hmm. people. Is here's a scenario. I don't know if I'm ready to leave. I don't know if I should leave. You know, please help or what, can, what advice can you have? Or they beat around the bush about it. Mm-hmm. But you know this is the question they're asking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is some kind of variation of this yeah. question. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was another good episode where mm-hmm. we, we just, I mean, tell you, like, we don't know what, <laughs> you have to make the decision for yourself ultimately if you're going to stay or go, but, <laughs> and if it was up to us, we'd probably tell you, yeah, yeah. you yeah. probably should yeah. go. Uh, number three is getting back with your ex. Mm-hmm. That one, I thought that... I'm surprised that's so high. Yeah. I thought that, like, should I stay or should I go would be... Number one. Mm. Or higher than that, anyway. Yeah, higher than the... Well, yeah. I mean, even looking at the other ones, I I, I thought that the getting back... I mean, is that really... I mean, I know it was a big enough issue because we had stuff on it, so that's why we talked about it. Yeah. But I didn't think it was that big. Maybe, and I think sometimes people, and we know this, people listen on behalf of other people. Mm-hmm. They'll hear something like, oh my gosh, my, my idiot friend keeps running back to her ex. Mm-hmm. You gotta listen to yeah, this. Yeah, what do they have to say? And then they'll, they'll share it or, or tag them in it or, or mm-hmm. talk about it. And you need to listen to this. So I think sometimes, sometimes we do have a topic that a lot of people really agree with our perspective. And they listen to it for confirmation in their own opinions and beliefs like most of us do yeah most of us don't want to sit through a podcast or a show or an episode listening to someone that we just completely disagree with Mm -hmm. and if you're doing that thank you for the listens (laughs) we appreciate it uh but i'm not sure what you're getting out of it other than what i do to myself when i listen to other shows and i'm like i just roll my eyes and i'm like are you fucking kidding me so if that's what you're doing once again thanks for the listens (laughs) You know, here's the 2020, keep pissing you off, I guess. <laughs> but I know that there are a lot of people that that are, they probably assume, if they listen to other episodes, they can assume from the title where we pretty much fall. Mm-hmm. And they're like-minded like us, and they want to hear mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, that's right, I agree, or... Whatever. I know, yeah, I mean, because with, with an episode like Getting Back With Your Ex, you know that... Since More we talk so highly of our exes. Yeah, we're not going to say, oh, you need to get back with your ex. Yeah, yeah that is a great idea. We're going to tell you. Yeah. And yet, like you said, most people uh, do agree with that. And have a, a dumbass friend that mm-hmm. is getting back with their ex. Well, I think this is another one that really kind of fell into the, oh, you're offended? Yeah. Because people that are with their back with their exes or keep getting back with them separating and getting back with and separating from their ex, of course they're going to be offended by it because they're like, well, do you really think I'm a dumbass because I keep getting back with my ex? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, they get upset about it. Mm-hmm. Which, if you don't think you're a dumbass, there's no reason to get upset. 
I know. But you should. Yeah. We, we all know that you're a dumbass <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> number number two. So the the last two, I, I really do. I'm not surprised I'm not surprised they were up here, yeah. Yeah. And so number two is when you're just roommates. Mm-hmm. Which I think that is really sad this one took off when uh-huh. we when we posted this one this one just started getting listen after listen after listen after listen um and it's i mean this is exactly where i was for 10 years of my marriage mm-hmm. it's so relatable mm-hmm. and that's why it is in the top two yeah. we had several people reach out and say i just listened to uh-huh. when you're just roommates and it got me thinking and it's you know that that's why we're doing it yeah. I mean, that's why we're doing the podcast, to, mm-hmm. to talk about things that people may think or feel that they're alone about. Um, and I think I said it on the Want to Change, Be the Change episode when I, I talked about, and I don't even have to do the title, but I remember talking about how happy it makes us when someone that we don't know that well or don't know their story is like, I would have sworn you had my phone tapped or you were eavesdropping on me because what you just shared is exactly what's happening in my mm-hmm. life. Um, <clears throat> and that all of these topics are common issues and, and you're not on an island and you're not the only one dealing with them and you're not the only one that's ever dealt with it and you're not the only one that's ever going to deal with it. And chances are millions of people are going through that same thing right now. Mm-hmm. And that's why these, these top ones, which I don't think they're sensitive – but they are very relevant to those normal relationships that we have a problem with. Mm-hmm. And this is a big, big factor. Yeah. Um, and we've seen some people that we've, we've known over the last just few years that were in this category. Mm-hmm. And they've gotten divorced. Yeah. I mean, we both were with just yeah. roommates with our exes. Mm-hmm. And that's it's what happens when you become just so used to that type of life it is a sign of falling out of love Mm -hmm. but people tend to want to say well i still love them and and you're confusing that statement with well i don't want them to die (laughs) that's really what i mean maybe not that but it's 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 not your 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 version of how you love your partner has changed because the sensuality the the lust the which i use as a good term Mm -hmm. the the sexuality the intimacy is gone and so you have redefined in your own mind what love is and it's well i love you know i love them like a family member because they are i love them like like my best friend because maybe they are i love them like my brother or sister because that's how you see them now but that's not reflective of a good healthy happy lengthy long-term relationship yeah they can't not sustain how you should that's not how you should look at your partner yeah your yes your partner should be your best friend mm-hmm. but they should have all those qualities yeah like I just said but they need to you need to have everything else along with it yeah i mean this this is when you're in a sexless relationship this is exactly how you feel mm-hmm. and and there shouldn't be a surprise with that. I don't know if if your partner's the one that's cut you off, so to speak, from sex. They should not ever, ever be surprised if you're like, well, it's like we're just roommates now. Mm-hmm. They have to understand and recognize that. And if they refuse to, there's a deeper issue for sure. But when you hit that point, you 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 know, like most of these, you have two options: work through it or leave. Yeah, I know. But if your partner refuses to be more than just a roommate. You know, mm-hmm. what, what, what do you do then? Yeah. So yeah, the, I, I was not surprised. This was mm-hmm. number two on the list. I know. And number one is reasons why men and women cheat. Yep. Um, probably for all the topics we covered. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really though. I mean, yeah, I, uh, again, I think this is really sad. Mm-hmm. The, this is the number one episode. This is what people are relating yeah. to most. This is what they're curious about. You Be, know. Because it's a fear. It's a concern in their own relationship. Mm-hmm. Which, if, if your partner cheating is a concern in your relationship, that is your one of your biggest red flags you can have. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, 
But I think some people, as with a lot of these issues, they think it's normal. You know, they're, they, because they've been cheated on so many times or because they've been a cheater themselves that they just feel that the risk to cheat or be cheated on is always high no matter who they're with. Mm-hmm. And that's not the case. If you have some key things in place, A, you're worth not cheating on. B, you get somebody that values your worth and knows you're not worth cheating on. Mm-hmm. And C, you have a partner that has some kind of integrity. <laughs> no, and there's no behavior going on in the relationship that would push them in that direction faithful people do not become unfaithful Mm -hmm. unfaithful people get exposed for being unfaithful yeah i mean there's there's you're you're never ever 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 going to convince me that a really good guy or a really good girl was super faithful and something happened and they weren't Mm -hmm. no they were unfaithful to begin with yeah um they just weren't acting on it well i mean i don't know do you, I cuz I think that maybe there is people that will act on it like they hit a breaking point yeah they they hit a breaking point almost like how how you say you have said in previous episodes about that you were hey if i say something incorrect you're not allowed to go back and use my own words against me to prove <laughs> your point no how you were like fearful <laughs> If you were to go out and, you know, to a place where there was single women or something Mm -hmm. trying to hit on you because you didn't want to even put yourself in that situation to... to, Be uh, tempted. Yeah. Yeah, But isn't that just a bigger testament to how faithful I was? Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess you could look at it. I'm just thinking, though, like, if, if if a guy did go out... And, you know, just out of nowhere, you, he never does go out usually, but then all of a sudden he did, then something happened. Well, I guess my only point is being unfaithful is a decision, mm-hmm. a blatant decision. It's not an accident. Oh, no. You don't no. accidentally have sex with somebody else. No, gosh. One no. thing does not lead to another, mm-hmm. you know? Right. There is there's a, a there is an intent behind it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was in multiple situations when I was in the military with guys that were actively cheating or trying to get laid, and I had the opportunity, mm-hmm. and I left the situation. Yeah. But so many guys would find that and blame everybody else. Well, you know, I had too much to drink, and... And the guys were giving me shit, and I don't remember most of it, and it was just sex, you know, and they'll come up with all the crap you hear when somebody gets caught. Yeah. You know, and I'll stick by what I said. Faithful people don't become unfaithful. I I really don't think so. I, I, now, I, I mean, I do, I, I, I do, I guess I will agree that there are guys that hit a breaking point. I mean, if, if. If I had cheated, I'm sure I would have justified it the same way that I've talked about how awful it was. Mm -hmm. Well, she quit having sex with me. I tried. She didn't want to go to counseling. I put forth all this effort to make it work, and she refused and didn't want to make it work and made it clear. But, you know, we did hit a point where she was like, why don't you go out and just hook up with somebody else? Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, she tried to give me a hall pass, and mm-hmm. I didn't because yeah. I thought that was wrong, wrong and stupid uh-huh. and asinine. Um, so when I look at it that way, I'm like, yeah, faithful people are going to be faithful. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know, I yeah. think that I think there's guys that are faithful when things are going great, mm-hmm. and then when they start not going great, they're like, well, I've been faithful and. And I've done her right, and, and I've done everything right by her, and, and, you know, I love her, and I love our kids, but I have needs. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that That's that's still inexcusable mm-hmm. to me. Leave. Yeah, there's no excuse. Just get a divorce. Mm-hmm. If, you, if your partner does not want to have sex with you, and you can't go without having sex, you got to get a divorce. Mm-hmm. If they're not going to change, and you still have to have sex... Get a divorce. Mm-hmm. That's what you should do. That's what I should have done. Yeah. You know? I know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's our top ten. Yeah. Though, and uh, I mean, yeah, number ten was if you're married, act married. Nine, the five love languages. Eight, want change, be the change. Seven, oh, you're offended. Six, you've settled in re- your relationship. Five, best qualities to men and women. Four, should I stay or should I go? Three, getting back with your ex. Two, when you're just roommates. And one, reasons why men and women cheat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you haven't listened to any of those episodes, or even if you want to go back and listen, mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I want to yeah. listen to that again. And if there was something not on the list that you thought was great mm-hmm. let us let know. us know mm-hmm. you know start the conversation yeah put it out there put it um, post it in the speakeasy yeah page yeah join we, we have a facebook group called marriage on the rocks speakeasy mm-hmm. um, and like we said before we, we share exclusive stuff we share behind the scenes photos we share you know it's a little more relaxed environment in there we have a lot more conversations with our followers um, you're dealing directly with us instead of like feeling like you're talking to a page. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're we're interacting with people in there, and and it's fun, um, and it's growing. Yeah. Um, we're we're getting new members all the time, so it keeps getting bigger. And so, if you haven't joined that, you know, find it Marriage on the Rock Speakeasy group, and uh, request to join, and we'll we'll throw you in there. Yeah. Uh huh. And you can I mean that gives you the opportunity to actually share stuff, share some positive ass post of the week or, yeah, there you or go. if you don't like that or you miss the dumbass post of the week find some dumbass post of the weeks and share them in there yeah we want drink ideas we want topic ideas we want you know questions if you're not comfortable bringing that stuff up in a forum shoot us a message mm-hmm. and let us know yeah um and reach out i mean you know we want to continue to interact with you we've got some uh, good stuff coming up for this next year, a lot of good um, stuff that we're excited about, and, and we're going to have some some good topics. We're going to probably do some part twos, or even maybe some part threes of of some of the stuff we talked about. I still think my my favorite episode of all time was the guys and girls can't be friends. I know, yeah, me too. That's I, that's my favorite episode. Uh huh. Yeah. And it got a ton of views uh-huh. and and listens as well. Yeah, but it wasn't this year. Though. Yeah, it wasn't this year, year, so it so. didn't make this list. So mm-hmm. we did that in twenty seventeen. Or 2018, 2018, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. So, yeah. It's a good one if you haven't listened to that one. Yes, listen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we want we want to wish everybody a happy new year. Mm-hmm. Um, we hope everyone has a yeah happy and safe new year. And I guess we'll talk to you all next year. Yeah, we'll talk to you next year. Yeah. So, don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Uh, rate and review us on iTunes. Yeah, rate and review us on iTunes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will talk to you next week. Thanks.